talked a lot about the program. Yes, program. Yes, program. Yes, program. Yes, program. Welcome to this week's segment of Dialogue Houston. I'm your host, Lawrence Payne, to our regular viewing audience. Welcome to those who have joining us for the first time here for HCC's TV Dialogue Houston. We can be found now every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 a.m. and again at 6 p.m. and also at 3 o'clock on Saturday afternoons. We thank you always at the top of the show for your thoughtful ideas for guest topics and subject matter to be covered on future segments of Dialogue Houston. For after all, this is your community affairs, public affairs show proudly now in its 32nd season here on ACC's TV. We have a great show lined up for you today. We're gonna dwell in the first segment into this whole issue of spirituality, but in a very special way to help us kind of understand not only when we use the word spirituality, what do we mean, but also the aspects of personal growth and development around the word spirituality and how spirituality used in the larger context of the text of society that we're living in for such a time as this, that may give us some insights to our own personal growth and also insights on how to work with, deal with and understand other human beings who in fact may be different than ourselves uh, as a way to understand the totality of humanity and how we all come together to serve uh, and go forward. To help us kind of understand this is a wonderful lady who has a, a program that's part of a larger institution she'll tell you about, and it's Kathleen Messina. She's the director of the spiritual. She's director of the Spiritual Direction Institute, which is part of the Emmaus Center, uh, which she'll tell us about. And I'm just so happy and glad to have us join us. Welcome, Kathleen. Thank you so much, Larry. It's very good to be here with you. I appreciate it. Well, first of all, I guess we need to uh, acquaint everybody with the Emmaus Center and Spirituality Center. So a little history and background. Sure. Um, the Emmaus Spirituality Center uh, just celebrated its third anniversary on June 1st. It was formed uh, by a group of individuals um, uh, at the time when the Seneca Sisters, who for many, many years in Houston had had the Seneca Retreat House, um, with its spirituality programs and spiritual direction and their presence in the community. When the Seneca sisters came to the place where they needed to reevaluate uh, where they were as a community and their viability here in Houston, given the challenges of age and the fact that they had been flooded during Hurricane Harvey, um, they turned over their programs and ministries um, and the Spiritual Direction Institute to lay leadership. And at that time, uh, the Emmaus Spirituality Center was formed. And out of that uh, has come some great work in the, in the new setting. Uh, by the way, it's a beautiful setting, the new setting. I was there just this past week. Um, so tell us, you know, this whole thing about uh, spirituality uh, and growth and development. Uh, tell us your take on how you approach this issue of spirituality as you cultivate with the people who are in your program? Mm -hmm. So specifically um, with this Spiritual Direction Institute, what we're doing is forming individuals who will accompany others in their spiritual journey. Um, we are Catholic based, but accept people from all Christian denominations and all those who really are seekers. Uh, but um, just to begin with, my sense of spirituality in itself is the living out um, the, the lived expression of our values. But so often, you know, we're not in touch really with what that is. Um, but the Spiritual Direction Institute itself has been in the Houston area for, I think it's 38 years. It was begun in 1985 out of the Office of Catechesis in the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston. So we, um, you know, at the Spiritual Direction Institute are continuing um, to hold and to um, hopefully uh, grow the, the great legacy that we've been handed to accompany others in their journey and to help them as they are seekers. 
And it's important to mention, I'll just touch on something you, you passed on a minute ago. It is non-denominational. It is open to all. It is open to all race, creeds, and colors, et cetera, and ethnicities. It's just open. Uh, it is and, open. <laughs> and the beautiful thing about it, as you said, is to help people express, of, to express their values. Mm -hmm. And in our time, in our time today, and in our time today, rather, that we're living through, um, being the ability to express one's values, to live out of one's values, to talk about what is the moral, ethical responsibility as human beings to other human beings, that becomes so important, does it not, in this in this era? Absolutely, Larry. And I'll just turn this off. Um, absolutely, Larry. And the one of the challenges, of course, is that we often lacked contact with our, our values. We're walking around with so many, many voices in the marketplace that we're not able to separate ourselves sometimes and to really get to the heart of what it is for us. Um, recently, I read an article by uh, Terrence Klein in, it was in America Magazine, it's a Jesuit weekly. And he was saying that atheism um, is not the biggest challenge to faith. Um, really what it is is idolatry um, that we s allow substitute things to take the place really of our deepest value which is se seeking god and living according to god's purposes um and uh so it's, it's it's quite a challenge to um really encourage and help people in in their quest well you know that whole question of searching which I think is a theme that runs throughout all of this development and formation and discernment. We're all searching for something. Mm -hmm. uh, we're searching uh, to get uh, deeper in touch with our own inner feelings. We're searching to understand others' feelings. We're searching to understand what is, should be our response and reaction to the things around us. How should we respond? How should we act? How should we serve? What should we do? Can we do anything? So the ability to search together with another group of people and to have that expression to be able to do it in a way that allows us all to actually the sense of belonging is what we're looking for mm -hmm. not only the searching part but a sense of belonging with a group a tribe or whatever you want to call it that we can express ourselves be freely accepted with no threat in a safe environment the crucible that holds us in that safe uh, environment to allow us to speak to our truth, to speak to our heart, to speak from our gut, and to be honest about that. I think that's right, Larry. And one of the beautiful things about it is that, um, and particularly the way that we conduct things at the Emmaus Spirituality Center and at the Spiritual Direction Institute, is that we have absolute confidence that all of us contain within us um the the spirit however you want to define that 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 can speak to us and lead us on that journey mm -hmm. and the, the key of course is we know that we are created to be in relationship with one another and as as i think that you were noting we we feel alienated from ourselves not just to other people mm -hmm. and so to be able to be accepted respected and allow that journey to play out um and be nurtured is just such a, a gift um you know to us i think it is and also it speaks to that we all have this inner voice inside of us and we have to learn to listen to that inner voice uh, but that takes on the whole realm of being able to be still to be quiet to be to be put yourself in a posture of meditation and i'll use the word prayer and to be able to hear that inner voice speak because it's there it's open to us it's available to us uh 24 7 7 days a week 365 days a year we just have to take the time and it is a question i think of time for most people the time to be still to avail ourselves of that opportunity mm -hmm. And I think that we can um, be encouraged in that. And I think um, it doesn't take a lot of time, Larry. It takes, I think, um, uh, a disposition toward giving that priority. Okay. Um, and developing 
the capacity for interior spaciousness to not be afraid to just sit in silence. The world definitely works against that. Um, there are messages constantly, we're constantly bombarded and, you know, questioning and, and having difficulty just even, as you say, listening to ourselves. Um, but definitely it requires stillness. Sometimes even you can be still even while you're in movement. Sure. It really is a posture that you encounter the world, I think. I love that phrase you just used, interior spaciousness. I'm gonna, use, I'm gonna remember that one. Okay. Uh, the other thing that I think allows us to do this is to bring into bear those two words we hear a lot about, but I think fits so well here, intentionality and mindfulness. Mm -hmm. I think when you approach anything that you're trying to do, accomplish, achieve, or to reflect on, to do it with a deep intentionality and mindfulness of everything around you and everything that you're thinking and feeling and what's that emotion that arises in you as you think and feel and reflect on what you say you believe, that's where it becomes real, I think. I think that's right. And, and I part of I think what you're pointing to, Larry, is the openness with self to allow um, what arises to arise and not to exile it or disown it, but to let it express itself and find the truth that's within it, because any of those feelings or thoughts or whatever that come give us great information because we can accept them or say, that's not who I am right now, or who I want to be. Adeline, is that, is that not the hardest part? <laughs> it is. It's a lifetime of work. You, I can you, made, it, you, you made it sound so easy. Just yeah. a minute ago, I said, she hit the core. That's, that's the hardest thing to do right there. Well, I can tell you, I'm in my 70s, and I'm still working really hard at it. Well, I, am, <laughs> I am too. I'm, I'm right there with you. I am constantly uh, in that process. Um, I think the other thing that's so important that this brings to bear once one allows them, oneself to do their internal work and then look outward is to begin to talk about the shared values uh, that you see that we have in common. And how do we begin to express the living out of those shared values, particularly as it pertains to helping perhaps other human beings in our common humanity in their growth and development? Mm -hmm. Right, with, without that movement outward, Larry, so otherwise it just becomes an exercise about me, myself, and I. Right, and, get you um, <laughs> And that's not what we were created for, you know, as, as we said earlier, to be in relationship. So how do I live that out right. um, and welcome the other in their journey and who they're discovering and, and working together then for our world, it's always for the betterment, um, not just of ourselves, but forever we live and way beyond. And, and, and in all our relationships. Right, back to that word, of this to pick up on that word. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that it really is about those relationships and the nature of those relationships that we value, but a very, I think, special kind of relationships, relationships built on mutual trust and respect. Mm -hmm. relationships nurtured, maintained, developed on mutual trust and respect because nothing happens without trust. Right, right. And that's the key cornerstone to moving that common agenda forward is a group of people who work together, who trust each other, who understand each other, and now are willing to work on, quote unquote, the common good in a very concise uh, approach. Mm -hmm. You know, we can be so impaired um, in that, Larry, though, because um, a couple of weeks ago, I, uh, as you know, I'm uh, um, also a chaplain in the Harris County Jail. And so um, I was uh, talking to the women, I deal with the women there, and I was talking to them about um, a similar topic, like reaching out to the other and to, oh, I know what it was. It was loving God as you love yourself, right? The golden rule, right? And so this woman looked at me and she said, but what if I don't love myself? Ooh. Yeah. Whoa, right? So, you know, the work for all of us, you know, um, has to go beyond us gathering people in, 
you know, giving them an experience of love and acceptance sometimes. So it's really, we don't start out with a mutual relationship. We're never in the same place when we're starting. Right, right. You know, I'm at a different level of impairment than you. And to make room for that in the conversation. Yeah, and people who have been incarcerated uh, tend, to, tend to look at life a lot differently than you and I. Uh, I was a chaplain for a while also at the uh, pre-release unit, uh, the Clemens unit pre pre-release program. And I learned so much from those men. It was all, it's all male group. Mm -hmm. I learned so much from those men uh, on what it means to really take the time to figure out uh, their circumstance and situation of how they got there mm -hmm. and why they're there. And in some cases, what keeps them coming back to there. Right. Uh, and that was a, a, a very uh, deep for me learning journey uh, in that whole episode. Mm -hmm. It's quite a privilege, I think, for us to be with them. Yes, it is. So as we look forward, going, going down the road a little bit here, um, if we could, a little crystal ball, think about how we could develop what we've been talking about in a larger scale. I think uh, the Mayo Center and you at your institute is willing to start ramping things up. Uh, I just see this as something that everybody should go through, should avail themselves of. It. Maybe not the whole long program, it's a modified program, a shorter version of it, but something that gets them to begin to think about and talk about some of the things we've raised just in these last few minutes. Yeah, Larry, um, you're definitely right about that because at the Emmaus Spirituality Center itself, it has offerings every month that will be about a sp very specific topic that allow people and hopefully attract them to do some self-examination and to receive some growth as a result of it. So those opportunities are always available. And likewise, um, also with the Spiritual Direction Institute, um, folks come in and, um, and as you said, from all religious denominations, um, but they come with the purpose of being formed as spiritual directors, but they use that in so many ways um, once they have received that formation. It's a commitment, just like you said, you know, can I commit, can I do the work? Um, but at the end of it, when they emerge from three years of formation as a spiritual director, they may or they may not um, go back to their respective faith communities and serve as a spiritual director, but they will also um, be able to serve in many, many places, whether you know it's different ministries within their faith community or within the community at large, whenever there are you're in a group and there are um, you know, there's work to be done or decisions to be made that those those um, skills of discernment and listening and presence, you know, are so helpful in any group setting. Mm -hmm. And then um, certainly in all of our interpersonal relationships um, to be able, I used that word spaciousness before and you liked it, um, to have that welcoming presence, that ability to just hold myself um, as I um, really behold the other, to allow them to be themselves. Imagine if all of us just took two seconds before we spoke um, after seeing someone or after someone saying something to just give all of ourselves some room here to be. Mm -hmm. Well. <laughs> spaciousness, interior spaciousness, room to be. What happens though, and I think a lot of people would love to do this and avail themselves of it. And as you said, the skill set can be used in so many different ways and so many different opportunities and settings. Um, but to take the time to do this, to agree this is something I want to do, it, for some people, gets in that realm of not the way we've talked about it in a growth process, but in the realm of mental health. Mm. That some people are hesitant to do this kind of, I call it doing your own work, to do your rug work. We all have to do our own rug work. You gotta get down, you gotta get honest with yourself, you gotta break down before you can rise up again many times. 
and be honest with self in that process. Because it, for some who say, oh, no, I don't really need anybody. I don't need to talk to you. I don't need to be with anybody uh, because of that stigma of, of mental health. Um, how do we how do we overcome that? Because I'm I'm thinking of some candidates right now who would be ideal uh, for one of the programs, but I know him well enough that in his worldview and in his surroundings, those who support, nurture, undergird him, uh, that's how they see it also. That it's a sign of weakness mm. rather than seeking the opportunity to grow. Right. Well, um, perhaps. Um, the direction that I think you're suggesting, Larry, is that people consider just entering into spiritual direction to that one on one relationship with someone else, because it doesn't um, uh, have the same connotation really as going for therapy. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and quite frankly, in, in its orientation is not necessarily to solve a problem, right, which you sometimes do when you go to therapy, right. but it is specifically to grow. And of course, to grow, we have to unearth all those things that are getting in the way of that. Yeah. And the beauty, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And so the beauty of that is when you meet monthly, you know, with a spiritual director for that hour, um, you are held in absolute um, unconditional acceptance and love. There is nothing off the table. Um, there's no judgment about where you've been or where you say you wanna go because a spiritual director is confident that God, the universe has this. It's a life is good, right? We've been yeah. given life. It's good and it's meant for the good. And so to allow people their own journey without any anxiety on the part of the director or a need to, you know, um, uh, really judge at all, you know, the steps along the way, but to encourage and to help reveal, uncover their deepest, deepest desires. Because we know our deepest desire is for wholeness. Right, right. Right? I've and described, for relationship. Right, and I've described it as no different than having a mentor or a tutor. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely no different than having a coach. Uh, because a coach is actually using some of the same things we're using. We just don't, they just don't use the religious words. They don't use the God words. That's right. So the same thing that they're asking them and, and, urge, and, and urging them to look at and urging them to think about doing this way rather than that way. It's the same kind of, uh, of a process. Well, we've got about a minute left. So I'm going to give you about 30 seconds of that uh, for any quick closing, anything we forgot to mention. And then, and then, I'll, close, and then I'll close us out. Okay, well, just um, one little aside there in response to what you just said, Larry, what's kind of interesting about the Spiritual Direction Institute and the way it has continued to adapt to changing circumstances, I now have several coaches in the program who've uh -huh. decided that see? they want to add that component to their, their skill set. Right. Yeah, I can see that very easily, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I would encourage any of your listeners to um, think about uh, spiritual direction or if they're looking for growth through programs and certainly for even, you know, to consider a three year program, which, as you say, is quite a commitment to consider the Emmaus Spirituality Center and the Spiritual Direction Institute. Tell us how to reach you right quick. Sure. Um, we are on Memorial Drive at the corner of Gessner. And the website is Emmaus Spirituality Center dot com. All right, you have it, and you've heard it from the horse's mouth herself. Mm -hmm. Kathleen, it's so great to have you on, and we thank you. Uh, we look forward to doing another one down the road uh, later on in the fall as we get ready for our gala, uh, which we'll do that. And uh, we thank you again. Let me just see if I can close this out real quick here. Um, we've covered a lot of things in this brief half hour. Uh, some of those truths are examining, looking at the meaning of life, how people are connected to each other, truths about the universe, mysteries of human existence, the comfort and release from stress, the higher power, the coping of challenges of life, uh, not a single path of a belief system, deep questions about what we're going to do, experiencing compassion and love, feelings of interconnectedness beyond material possessions as a way to help serve you and be happy, 
and seeking meaning and purpose in our lives, all of that mm -hmm. and more. So as we go through this, uh, remember uh, that we are really, really able to perhaps dive a little deeper. And, uh, you know, it starts with, and this is part of my closing real quick, it starts with all kinds of simple things. Uh, like you've heard this about the breathing. It starts with breath work. It starts with meditation, quiet space. It starts with prayer or however you define that word prayer and how you think about prayer. It starts with looking, it starts with looking at whom and how am I serving in my community? How am I spending time with nature? Do I allow myself a moment to get away from all of this stuff? How do I understand others in relationship to where I am? And if, if one takes the time, and as Kathleen said, not a lot of time, you don't have to uh, dwell on it, but you do have to look at it. And I wanna be clear because I told one of uh, the regular audiences, uh, viewing audience members of Dialogue Houston, we're doing this segment. Uh, and he, wanted, he said, well, you're talking about religion, you're talking about spirituality. I said, good question. We're talking about spirituality. Uh, there's a difference. Um, and I think the quick difference that I explained to him is when we talk about spirituality, we're talking about practice with individuals. Uh, religion is more about, a, about the community. Uh, spirituality, we set in our own rules and we begin to develop and talk about how we're going to do that. In religion, sometimes we follow a set of rules. Uh, it's a personal journey when we talk about spirituality. Sometimes in religion, the text is already there. We just follow the text because that's part of our tradition. It's a deeper purpose of my life. It's a deeper outlook. It's a daily gratitude. We didn't use that word yet, but I wanna lift that word up. Part of this process is to be grateful, to be grateful and to express daily gratitude for the gifts, talents and skills one has been given for what reason in service to other human beings. That's why we put on the face of the earth, not for ourselves, but for other human beings. So as we open our hearts, as we begin to look at how we proceed, it must be important. Remember, opening your heart is important because we keep talking about the need for more equity in how people treat each other. The road to equity is through empathy. The road to equity is through empathy. Having a more empathetic heart in how we see and serve our fellow human beings. We gotta go for now until we come together again. Be well, be safe, peace, power, and love. <laughs>